I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Welcome back, guys. The Ultra Carbon After Show Season 2, Episode 1, Phantom Lady. I'm your host, Shaka Smith, joined by my wonderful co-host, who is back with me again from last season. Nate, what's up? What's up, guys? We're back again. Man, I I'm super excited. This was a heck of an episode. Yeah. Um, so we got a lot to talk about, guys. We got new sleeve, new crime, old lovers, so much going on. Uh, but let me just dive right in. What were your overall thoughts? Yeah, um... I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of mixed about it. I liked a lot of it. Like I said, the atmosphere felt great. It really felt, it captured a lot of the first season, the things that I liked. Um, there were some story elements I kind of raised my eyebrow I wasn't quite sure about. Um, but overall, on the whole, it, it definitely got me more excited to see what's going to happen with the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I just breathed a sigh of relief that I was able to buy into Anthony Mackie as Kobach. You know, I was really afraid. I really liked Joel Kinnaman's char character. He played it I so agree. well last season. I was afraid I'd be let down um, this season, but I'm totally invested, and I, I really want to see, you know, how badass Kobach can be. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I we got to give Mackie more time. Yeah, I'm I'm still not completely convinced it's him playing Kovacs because I look at him and I still just see Mackie. I still see Falcon or whatever, mm. um, but. As far as like tough guy super soldiers, like he fits the role, the role yeah. perfectly. You know, he looks <laughs> great. He's jacked. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where he goes from it. But there was some of it was it just felt kind of like hand wavy of like this is what's happening now. Yeah. It just is, and I'm like okay. Yeah, but I, did, I thought Mackie actually did a good job with the accent where he tried at moments to sound as if he was someone with that accent. Did. But in a, to me, a believable way. I, eh. <laughs> no. I need, I need, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say no. I'm going to yeah. say I just need to see a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that goes to our first topic is that new sleeve. So he gets this upgraded sleeve. What do you think about the upgrade? Uh, it's pretty interesting. Last time, you know, he was in the cop's body who, you know, was in shape and stuff, but yeah. n not a super soldier. Yeah. So it's interesting <laughs> now to see him like be knocking guys across the room and stuff and have these guns that have like magnets that yeah. are like in his hand or something like that. And he can heal quickly too. Yeah. Which allows you to also then stab yourself for a memory recall. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, we also got some really, uh, some other new characters introduced. Trep, um, who is an actress from Luke Cage. I, I, I like this sort of no-nonsense character. I'm not sure where she's going yet, but I liked, I liked her vibe. What did you think about her? Yeah, I think they definitely didn't set her up just to be like one and done with that episode. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see what she's going to do now that, you know, her boss is dead or at least the guy who hired her to send the message. Um, but it's great to see, you know, badass female characters that aren't like one note that yeah. have like a full character around them. So yeah, which I thought they did really well first season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's good to see them carrying that on. Um, I was surprised in that scene to, I mean, I kind of had a hint that he was the singer, but by the time it came around, I was like, I don't think he's even there. Yeah, so you're like, not sure. It was a good twist for me. Yeah, and it was nice to get Poe back in there too, because you're not sure if he's coming back. But he's kind of one of the coolest characters. Yeah, I, it's if Poe again, he's one of the ones elements that feels a little shoehorned mm. for me. Um, that being said, I really did enjoy him in the first season. I really like that actor. Mm. Um, and having like an AI companion for Kovacs to talk to definitely helps to get kind of more exposition on the character. Um, so I think it works. It works pretty well. Yeah, and I, and I liked that the AI sort of in his back pocket. He, had, you know, last season he got out of a lot of trouble with the AI. The AI was really able he to did come say, through. He literally yeah. saved his life. Yeah. yeah so and so the friendship kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's good to know that Kovac has that. It, hopefully, if the it stops being glitchy, and why hasn't he fixed the glitch? Isn't it the future? Aren't we like why is the AI yeah, still? Yeah, I want. I think it has to do. There was something in the first season where like he was like permanently damaged because of one of the enemy malicious AIs or something yeah. like that. I oh, I remember that it. now. Yeah, and it was to me that was one of the story elements. So where it's like you're so far in the future, we're doing all these things. We can't just fix the AI a little bit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but they're very complex. Yeah, AI. <laughs> yeah, super complex. Uh, what did you also think about the time jump? So we have a thirty year difference now. I just I I was I. I was unclear that that's what happened because the yeah. dialogue happened, but like it just didn't feel like they laid into that enough. It makes sense to have a time gap because it would be kind of weird if like right back to back all yeah. this stuff happens. Um, 
So I don't know. I, the one cool thing, though, is now there is a 30-year gap of him doing whatever he's doing for them to do flashbacks and stuff of. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I, I'd like to know, did he ever get invested in someone else that he was in love with? You know, <laughs> This one just really tugs, tugs on the heartstrings. Here. Yeah, yeah, I think, the, and again, in this episode, seeing him seeing Kelcrest again, and obviously yeah. he's still having those visions or whatever you want to call it, hallucinations, yeah. um, that's clearly really driving him. Um, so it, and even though in some ways it's like, yeah, like move on, yeah. he's she's literally there like, <laughs> you have to find me, yeah. you have to stab yourself, yeah. like whatever. So it, it, he, it's not like he's like yeah. just like pining after her. He's getting these palpable visions. He's yeah. like, ah, yeah. I'm still she's in love. tangibly yeah. there in front of him. <laughs> um, and then we got to talk about this new crime now. So we get Horace Axley. And I think we always love Kovach on a mission, right? We always like to see him sort of the law and order SVU in the future. Yeah. Um, Horace Axley, I guess he abducted him and he needs protection himself and then we find out he's no longer i was just really glad that it wasn't going to be another season of him working for a meth i mean like oh, yeah. here comes the setup meth yeah. comes to hire him then he goes on the job um so to see that him get there have him already be dead is interesting i do think there's a reason why he said like they're gonna blame me for this because mm -hmm. they probably will yeah um and the one thing that he did mention that i completely forgot about is this guy as a meth definitely has a backup yeah right but there was that like weird thing like on his face, yeah, that, which makes me think maybe he won't have a backup. Maybe, maybe because also why else would he be so scared to to bring him out if yeah. he could just come back? Exactly, he just so, upload himself. Yeah, and then of course we know it looks like Kelcrest is the one who killed killed him, and I love it because it does change that dynamic. He's not just looking for some random murderer of right. meth. He's actually looking for the the love who looks like she's murdered. Right, and I would think if she's murdering them, she's doing it with some finality so there might be something to that right because she yeah. knows how the stack works yeah. it's not like she would waste her time yeah yeah it, i mean and this is why i say even though i raised some eyebrows um, we looked at each other <laughs> while we were watching it a couple times um it was a really good setup episode there's actually a lot of groundwork and with the last season one of the things they did really well was having a greater conflict and themes and stories and stuff and on the side there was a lot of cool action and all the stuff that yeah. he was doing, but there was also all these other conceptual things going on with the world, and it feels like they're setting up to do the same thing again. Like yeah. we saw uh, the new governor addressing the people yeah. about you know stopping the attacks from uh, the rebel the, group. I don't yeah, remember the, what the they're protectorate. Called. The protectorate. Yeah. No, the protectorate is the with is, Lieutenant Colonel Carrera. Yeah. Yeah, the protectorate are like the like the cops, and they are battling. What is it? The Kel, the Kel? It was something. It, was, it sounded yeah, like the her name. Falconers or something. Yeah, yeah. Or the Kel Crest. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> They're attacking the mines because this. So Harlan's World is the planet where they mine the resources to make, make the, the stacks. stacks. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the Kel Cresteners. I have to look up what yeah. they're called, uh, want, are attacking them there because they're anti-stack. Yeah. So it just kind of makes sense. You stop them at the source. Um, so them setting up this whole conflict is very interesting. And then how does, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Horace, how does Axley come into play into that as well? And then why is Kilcrest killing him? And there's a lot of questions, which I'm excited to get answered. Yeah, I love that they went a little bit broader than just sort of this, like, revenge or get get her back, this ancient story, yeah. personal story. Um, and, of course, so we, we have these moments now. I love the character Hideki. I think it was Hideki Tasada? Kasat Tasada? Did I get that right? Yeah, Kanasada <laughs> Hideki. Yeah, so I, I love that moment where... You see the history has played out, but yeah. he had a couple things to say about losing, losing a piece of yourself and why right. Kelcrest might be changed. Different. Did yeah. you find that like it, I, I think that's going to be a setup for the entire season? Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. and especially with the reveal at the end that that's who attacked him. Yeah. You know, I, based off that line, yeah. she's not going to be what he thinks he is. Even if that is, I mean, who knows if that's even her? Yeah. Just because that that's be the body. Someone in maybe, her sleeve, yeah, yeah, maybe there's just a sleeve made to look like her, and there's another stack in there. In this world, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really interesting coming from him. I do have to say, though, like I said to you as we were watching, if you're a meth who's 300 years old, why are you in a 70, 80-year-old <laughs> sleeve? Like, I, I know to preserve some sanity, you have to look like yourself yeah. still. But when, but last season, we that, that you know, for, I forget his name, but that white dude, he was, <laughs> he was not that old. Yeah. He didn't look that old in his sleeve. Well, I, I think... 
and I'm hoping they explain that. I hope they just don't leave us out there kind of like wondering why do some yeah. people decide to look older or not older. But I think it has something to do with that loss of self that yeah. you want to preserve as much and maybe seeing that same face in the mirror because we saw what he went through when mm-hmm. he saw like different faces when he just got switched. So I think that could have something to do with it. And if you know you're already going to be alive regardless, it might just be more of a let me make sure that my mental is a little bit more on point. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I could see for. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Um, my question for you is, do you think we're going to see the grandson again? Uh, of course we're going to see the grandson yeah. again. Just, yeah, of course we're going to see the grandson <laughs> he, again. Though he was not happy yeah. about getting told off by his grandfather. At all. But I, yeah, I don't know in what capacity or how rebellious he'll be because they really set up that whole chain of command. But he might, for maybe, sure. maybe he kills the grandfather and he decides to do something. Yeah, he just, I guess, got bad vibes <laughs> from him. That whole sequence was really cool, though. Him saying the family death poem. and yeah. Then, like, oh, he saved me 300 years ago. Like, it's just just a cool sentence to yeah. say. Like, <laughs> and, and one thing I, for me, they keep setting up these envoys as these pretty much indestructible killers. Like, how did all the other envoys die out? They got hunted down by the Protectorate. And you have to remember that he, uh, they had like a, there somebody turned, yeah. right, is what happened. Oh, and, and then, then there they, was that. Yeah, and then they like, they came and they attacked the planet with all that crazy stuff yeah you just you would think though that there'd be more than just one given how elevated these envoys seem I to mean, be I in terms be of the fighting skill find out that there is one other survivor or something yeah. as a plot point but in general like they were created so long ago and the protectorate has made such a push to hunt them down you know any ones that may have been survived that it just seems like time yeah. that yeah it's it, it kind of makes sense kind of lends to the possibility be, yeah um, but yeah, I, I, I was really a big fan that they were able to get out so much in this episode and lay down. And I think that might be why it was a little bit herky-jerky for us. Yeah. Because A, they had to kind of set a scene where anyone who had just walked into it, a new viewer, could just kind of pick it right, up from pick, episode one. Exactly. And then they also had to kind of set up the rest of the, the yeah. season. When she's when she's sitting in the bar in the beginning saying like, oh yeah, Walter Kovacs, who did this? And yeah. he's in love with Kel Crest Falconer. Yeah. And he's out <laughs> looking for her right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> All right, I guess I didn't need to watch a recap of the last season. Yeah, and I, and I love that they're setting up this whole idea of the mind and the body that, you know, when you, we thought we separated the two, but there's still something there yeah. in the body that is preserved. Yeah. And so um, we also have some great segments as well. Um, we're going to have a little bit of news, and we're going to have our special segment, Badass of the Week. That's right. Because um, Kovac is back. He's upgraded. And so we're going to look at other badasses of the week. And let's see how Kovac uh, measures up. <laughs> um, but let's go into, yeah, well, who's your badass of the week this week? Um, My badass, I figure, just start strong. Uh, John Wick. John Wick, nice. The ultimate Baba Yaga. <laughs> uh, you know, scary killer guy supreme who only wants to care for his dog and live his quiet life in a retired home. So, so John Wick versus Kovac. I mean... Kovacs would win, <laughs> and in in almost all of his sleeves, he would he would win. Just just probably. I mean, as good as John Wick is, like he's not a hundred years old, <laughs> and wasn't trained to like withstand mind torture <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, however, I do think he'd give him a good a good run for his money yeah. for sure. Uh, probably a tough a tough matchup. A t- do you have one? Uh, bad at. I keep just thinking Captain America. Uh, how could I not think Captain America, badass of the week? Yeah. Um, but of course, of course, I think Captain America gets that battle. You Captain think America. so? You know, when I think about the shield versus those guns, we haven't seen what the guns can really do, um, but it looks like they can just come to his hand when he's close range. Um, that shield goes further. Yeah. So I think when you're looking at that shield versus those guns, I'm going to go with this, the the shield looks more versatile. Okay. I might, uh, I'm a little 50 50 on that one. Yeah. He does, they both have the strength, they both have the Love healing, healing factor. Um, Cap definitely has the mental game for yeah. sure. But I mean, it depends on the fight, but I think in the right circumstances, Kovacs would win only because I think he's more likely to kill him or he's more likely to, to do something maybe not as honorable in honorable, order to win yeah. the fight. Where I yeah. think Steve, that, that would be his weakness is that he would, you know, he would be like, oh, you got me. I'm sorry. Steve would be like, it's all right. Good fight. And then he would and like pull him down. And, and I feel like we need up. like a claymation fight of these now. <laughs> like, I want to see this. Yeah, I want to see these played yeah, out. That would be awesome. <laughs> and of course, we have another special segment called News. Um, not much news, but a little bit of news. TV news. And that is the novelist Richard K. Morgan did say that he saw 
uh, also covering going five seasons. If it, if it played out perfectly, obviously the numbers and the viewers got to be right. But um, he saw it going five seasons. So this is an exciting time to be a viewer. And of course, Joel Kinnaman also came out. Some people were concerned about whether or not he'd be upset that he'd be replaced season two. But he was a big fan of the books. He read them all and knew that it was likely he wouldn't be there for season two and wished him Anthony Mackie the best and was actually excited to watch it because that's how the books are supposed to go. Yeah. So it'll um, be interesting to see if they are able to follow the books as well. And there's two more books, Broken Angels and Awoken Furies, that also feature the character of Kovacs. So we may get five seasons, but we may get even more. So Yeah, I mean, I'd be definitely into that, especially if they continue on the path that they're on now. Yeah. Um, it's it's a cool idea to be able to have this character that multiple actors can come in and play yeah. and bring to life. I think that's cool. And it's also just this whole universe, the what they've set up, I think there's a lot of potential for stories, even if they somehow move on and Kovacs isn't the main character anymore. Yeah. Um, I think the idea of stacks and envoys and the whole interdimensional travel thing there's yeah. a lot of really interesting things in play there yeah so this is exciting news so hopefully you know i'm, I'm happy for season two and i want three four and five <laughs> so um, and of course we got to talk a little bit about our predictions your after buzz tv predictions what do you got um you- i don't know we got a really interesting quote uh where he says with endless future comes endless past so mm. i think for one we're gonna get a lot of flashbacks of yeah. course um i my other prediction i think just like how in the first season he was at the body of a detective and it was a lot of detective murder mystery kind of thing now that he's in a body of a super soldier i think it's going to be a lot more action a lot more shooty bang bang yeah um not not to say that he won't be figuring stuff out but i think there's going to be a lot more shooting in yeah. this in this one i think for sure um, I'm going to I'm gonna pull this one out. It just kind of came to me. I just started to feel it because there was the quote again about, you know, not separating the mind and the body. We thought we separated it, but the body's got these memories. I think that maybe this particular body might have strong memories towards another character. Um, and maybe there might be a double mission and there's a conflict of that mission. Um, sure. You know, imagine you're having to, you know, kill your ex-wife or you kill your wife but she's actually hunting down the person you are now in this sleeve. yeah well it's just like last season so yeah he, he was in the sleeve of the other girl's boyfriend but then also had to deal with the murder thing and, the same, and then his sister came in so yeah. yeah i'm sure they're gonna there's gonna be some other like b plot kind of concurrently yeah with that. to understand I, I i can't wait to see if they're gonna give us the back story on the sleeve he's in yeah, yeah, that's and that's what I'm hoping for. That's why I said I give Mackie pass. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Cause for me, like Joel was really good, but where it came to life was with the scenes of him being Kovacs and then him being the guy that of the sleeve that he was in before. Yeah. And then seeing how they were actually differently, then I was like, okay, I can really see him. And he pulled it off so well right. where he believed so it. So that's yeah. what I'm looking for is yeah. to see Mackie be whatever this character, this sleeve was. Yeah. But also, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen because they keep talking about how like it's a combat sleeve and like he's like engineered to be like yeah. a super soldier kind of a thing so i don't know if it was a person and i'm also really unsure how the yakuza guys could just look at him and be like oh he's a super soldier it's an expensive yeah, sleeve like is there a tag or, or, hanging or somewhere? do a bunch look the same and so they've right. already so seen is there just a, a, a army of <laughs> anthony mackies going around kicking ass that'd be kind of cool yeah that was actually that might actually be the twist we need <laughs> <laughs> pull the helmets off yeah it's like, it's like eight whoa. anthony mackies <laughs> which is a real kovach um so yeah we will see but that it was an exciting exciting uh first episode and I think what was your grade for the episode you had to grade this episode uh, I would give it a B plus, B plus? It, yeah I, some of the action was a little lackluster to me there's too many cuts in that initial scene also while maybe it is a plot explanation I feel like it's very hand wavy to be like oh no that's a really expensive sleeve don't use all these guns that we just pulled yeah, out we, we're three surrounded, seconds ago yeah, yeah. No, instead let him beat the crap out of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a little herky for me too. I was like, hmm, you, you're surrounded, you know. <laughs> yeah. And also the whole like, oh, he's an envoy. He let you capture him so he could come here and have an audience with me. Like, nah, I'm pretty sure he got beat up and then shot in the foot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I did. I actually liked that line because I thought, I thought towards the end of the fighting scene, it seemed like he was letting them win. I, I, I Maybe felt I need that. to rewatch it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, he's kind of like just kind of eased off real quick. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for uh, episode two. Well, where can they find you online? So they, if they have any complaints or concerns, you just find him online. That's right. You come straight <laughs> for me. Yeah. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Dog Like Nate. That's Dog with two G's. 
uh yeah that's it that's all i got and you guys can find me on twitter instagram and snapchat at shaka strong and of course give us five stars give us the likes and all the comments we really appreciate it guys we'll see you guys next week our founder kevin undergaro and me maria menounos would like to thank you for tuning in to after buzz tv remember we're not just the first we're the biggest in the world and we're the only destination for all your favorite tv shows whatever you crave we've got it so go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.